Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ashes of Creations live stream. Our live stream. That was stream. great. That was yeah, a nice little yeah. handoff there. Thank you. Uh, I didn't know name, you were going to do it. I know. My name is Stephen Sharif. Uh, this is Jeffrey Bard. Hi, guys. And Peter Pallone. How's it going? The Soft. Nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween. Halloween. It's one of my favorite holidays. As you can see, we have a rooster. A rooster. And a formal apology. A formal apology. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty clever. It's nice. And low effort. I, low I, I believe I have the scariest costume of all. It's true. I, I don't know what to do with it. It's <laughs> oh, like my whole world. Oh, no. It's, it's We're wearing shoes. It's like <laughs> Steven's evil twin or something. I'm not sure. You somehow <laughs> managed to out low effort my costume. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, I actually don't own a pair of sneakers. Right, that's true. Uh, so I had to borrow <laughs> so that was a lot of effort. <laughs> I'll have you know. Um, <laughs> how's our audio? Are we good on audio? <laughs> what are those? Somebody says. Um, yes. So a Halloween here at the office, having a lot of fun. Um, we have a, a video that we're going to show you at the end of the stream, similar to what we did last year, where uh, we had um, uh, just to kind of walk through the studios, uh, and everybody had their costumes, kind of talked mm -hmm. what they were, you know, working on and whatnot. Um, so you guys will see that at the end of the stream. We have a lot to talk about on this stream. Yes, we a have lot a lot yeah. to show we on do. this stream. Um, and to be honest with you, um, it might go, it might slightly go over an hour, which you know, yeah. I'm sure you guys won't mind, um, and neither will we. <laughs> 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 so, uh, without further ado, however, let's get into the discussion of uh, progress that we have had with uh, Phase One of Alpha One. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, we've got a really good group of testers, it feels like. Yes. Um, we've been uh, hammering things pretty regularly every weekend. Um, every weekend, e weekend we come away with uh, a lot of new lessons and a lot of new bugs, obviously, and stuff to work on. Um, so every week kind of represents a big chunk of progress for us. Yes. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the ultimate goal is, is getting near. It's been great for us that we began the stress testing uh, uh, last month in September, mm -hmm. uh, and okay. although that was earlier than we had expected, um, it proved very beneficial because you know there were things that we are learning uh, and able to fix uh, in a timely manner. Um, uh, but it's been a lot of a lot of things that we've come across that we didn't know we'd come across necessarily, right. and we've been able to tackle. Uh, one of the greatest achievements we've had mm -hmm. uh, just over the past uh, eight nine days, I think. Um, was, you know, we were seeing <clears throat> uh, server-side frame rate. Uh, we were having some issues getting that to a where point where we be. wanted yeah. it to be, right? Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, we were doing a few tests with 100 players in the match, but ultimately our goal when it comes to large-scale battles is to have multiple hundreds of players right. in an mm -hmm. area. Um, and, you know, there are some custom changes that we have to implement in order to make that make a reality. Make that work and right. make it all as smooth as we possibly can. Absolutely. So uh, about nine days ago, <coughs> excuse me, we had a uh, test with 100 players, and where we were at uh, uh, on the server side frame rate, and for those of you who may not know, um, you know, the difference between frame rate on the server and frame rate on a client, um, you know, the server is what's communicating those packets, those messages, the uh, functions between you picking up an item, opening a door, damaging another player, you know, those types of things. When the server frame rate is low, it can feel very laggy. Uh, when uh, you know client side FPS, that's where you're you're seeing the frame rate of your screen and and, and rendering all of the assets and buildings and players and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But on the server side, uh, we want that to be above 20, really, right? right? That's a that's where we, we that's where you're generally not going to notice it. <clears throat> exactly. Mm -hmm. Now we had a hundred players uh, eight days ago. Before eight days ago, we were not seeing above a 20. But eight days ago, with some uh, amazing work from our coders, from our engineers, yeah, our engineers are amazing. by the way, who are stellar, so shout out to our engineers who are behind us, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we saw a server frame rate of above uh, 55, I believe it yeah. was, uh, with 100 players, which is very, very good. Silky smooth, yes. good as butter, that means we've got room to grow. Absolutely. Um, so it's, it's positioning us really well. And as many of you know, our next testing mode uh, in phase one uh, is the castle sieges where we intend to have 100 players versus 100 players. So uh, getting that type of performance uh, uh, increase that we saw just last week 
uh, really puts us in a nice sweet spot for yeah. that. It's um, also the, the cool thing about the castles is that it's in a much, not a much smaller area, but a smaller area. So again, the density of players is higher. The challenges kind of go up even just above the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, it's 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 pretty exciting to go. Yeah, on absolutely. Space. Now, <clears throat> one thing that was important for us to observe uh, with the release of the NDA that we had this month. Um, was obviously player feedback. Now, what we saw from uh, players who were participating in the test is that it's a lot of fun. You know, although it's not uh, you know the MMO combat that we intend, it is the action side of that right. combat, right? Um, and you know, we need to perfect that um, mm, those principles of action combat in order to integrate into the tab targeting yeah. system. And it also actually helps out the tab systems too, because we get a lot of I don't know. Action combat requires a good animation fidelity, and so we right. can take those animations and we can put them over on the tab side, and everything looks better. Absolutely, yes. So um, <clears throat> one of the great things about uh, opening up that NDA was then allowing the community to, to kind of watch a little bit more as our content creators and Alpha 1 participants and Alpha 2 participants that we've invited uh, as they get to experience the game and as we iterate from week to week. Now, our end goal, obviously, we're going to get to a 24-7 uh, testing right. period. Um, which is very, very soon. Uh, there's just a few more things we want to get in place for that, such right. as region support, mm -hmm. uh, having servers up in Europe and uh, uh, in North America, different parts of North America where players can uh, uh, connect to a closer uh, server. Right. Um, but before we get into a little bit more um, uh, about uh, Alpha 1 Phase 1, um, we will switch gears a little bit because... Uh, while you've been seeing the Battle Royale gameplay, that is the testing mode uh, for uh, Phase 1, uh, a lot of people have brought up um, you know, wanting to see the MMO progress, basically the, the traditional look of, uh, of the third-person MMO right. perspective with some tab targeting skills. They want to see the Phase 2 world. How does all this stuff come together? How does it come together, yeah. exactly. So now, we were not intending to show footage uh, of that until we were a few months deeper into yeah. mm -hmm. uh, phase one. We really wanted to be ready for it um, right. again, uh, but you know. But we evaluated, so I mean, our philosophy, our mantra has always been that we are as transparent as possible. Yeah. Um, and again, we've said it many times, that that is a double-edged sword, and people who are not intimately involved with our development might look at something we show to you guys uh, and not understand that it is not a final product. The history behind it. Yeah. Right. So um, we're going to do as we've done in the past, and we're going to show it anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because, uh, you know, m our, our philosophy is that even if we show something that is a work in progress, and you understand that and we understand that, um, if somebody comes and they look at it and they say, you know, this is a final product, whatever, They'll come back and look at the final product when the final product's ready yeah. to be shown, mm -hmm. and we're we're okay with that. You know, if it's a good game, they will come. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm not too if worried you about build it. Yeah, it, they will come. You should have worn a baseball suit. I, you, you know, <laughs> uh, Padres are not missed great. potential. Wow, Padres are not. <laughs> it's true. I oh it's, my I think God. it's a fact. Is it? Oh, that's so sad. Well, if they were in the World Series, they might have won, but they had to get there first. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, so, anyways, um, <coughs> we're gonna load up the MMO footage. Uh, and we're going to discuss with you guys a little bit about um, what we are seeing, uh, basically. Do we have that footage that we can play? I hope so. Wow. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> not talk. a question we should be asking. Oh, there we go. Are we still on? Can, we're still on uh, verbal or audio wise. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Very good. So, <clears throat> what you guys are seeing here, why don't you give us a little bit of context about where we're at and what we're, what we're looking at? Okay, so um, this is kind of a test bed for um, some of the prototyping that we're doing on uh, the MMO side of things. Um, so again, like a lot of this stuff is is pretty uh, functional. It's not flashy, um, but again, we've taken a lot of the work that we've uh, progressed on with with the Alpha One Phase One and kind of pulled it all into uh, where the MMO is going to go. Now, something we're seeing here, and this is so <clears throat> you're actually now right now you're in a part of the map. Uh, that is in phase two. Uh, and this location, um, there's some weather moving through here. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, this is one of the things that we're prototyping right now is the weather system and trying to get that integrated into all of our other systems and making sure that we have, you know, when it rains, what can happen. Right. Um, and so you might see up here 
a giant spider demon, and he has emerged from his now flooded cave. Because of the weather system. Because of the weather system. Absolutely. And he is going to find a new home, or maybe find another And node. weather's dynamic in the world. Like, you'll start to see these, these puddles forming in this area because of that rain, right? Yeah. And um, additionally, this fog has become a little bit more prevalent because of the rain system that's moving through. Yeah. Um, so that's a way that we provide uh, a dynamic element to the, to the view of this world that can change uh, throughout right. the gameplay. It's not just about the nodes, right? It's about the whole world. And we want the world to tell a story um, beyond just, you know, looking pretty. So actions have consequences even when those actions are weather. Right, absolutely. So here you're seeing a little bit of um, tab targeting, you might also recognize some skills from the Battle Royale testing, they like that teleport. And that's because, again, as we've said in the past, when people say, you know, how much time has this taken out of the MMO? It's the same, the same skill systems, right? We're, we're, just, we're just placing them in an action mode versus a integrated uh, a hybrid mode, right? right? Mm -hmm. So this has some basic elements. You guys, by the way, don't judge the, uh, the work in progress on the skill effects. I know they're, they're a little bright. Additionally, the UI is a bare minimum here. <laughs> so yeah. also don't judge the UI there. But uh, you know, this is kind of showing you guys a little bit of, um, of um, uh, basically, the uh, phase two world. Yeah. Uh, what are we fighting here? We're so fighting. we're fighting some mushrooms, um, and you can see that um, when it's on Jeffers, I'm the tank. Um, all of my combat, uh, my sword swings are action based, and then my other two skills are tab based. So it's it's we're kind of already starting to work on that hybridization, trying to figure out how it all feels together, if it makes sense. Um, and and how to make it you know feel like one seamless system. Right. <clears throat> so uh, we're our, this is we were on a quest here. Uh, yeah. What was mm -hmm. the, this was the uh, um, we were gonna go to the town. We we're gonna go find uh, I think his name was uh, Hammer Hammer Still something Hammer like that. Hammer Still. Okay. Um, and uh, he's got he's got some things he wants us to do. Right. We were taking a letter to uh, Hallister. Was it yeah. Hallister and that Garman? Is right. And Garman. So <clears throat> um, some other whoops. There we go. Sorry. Um, some other interesting aspects of <laughs> some other interesting aspects of this um, of this gameplay here uh, is that this is the beginning of some of the class kits that we're that we're actually compiling for the castle sieges, right? So right. Mm -hmm. you see here uh, two uh, DPS uh, kits: one magic, one archery, and then the other one is the tank. I think you're on the tank, right? Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so you know, there's there's uh, we don't have the full skill system in this uh, uh, video, but uh, we're using some of the base skills that might be present in yep. uh, in the castle sieges. Yep. Again, again, this is just a prototypey kind of area that we're testing weather in. So, so again, it's just kind of the bare minimum to to make sure that everything's working the way we expect it to, and that the knockoff effects aren't going to break anything or explode right. nodes or you know like that. And one of the other interesting things is you'll also notice that time of day here is dynamic as well. So right now, now is kind of like a nighttime. There's some stars in the sky, um, uh, but the time of day will be functional in um, <clears throat> in phase two as well. So you'll see uh, transition, this right. dynamic lighting mm -hmm. transition with the time of day. Um, uh, this is this is uh, optimized. Excuse me. The settings, the graphical settings here are on medium, I believe. Yeah. Um, so that's why it may not uh, appear epic quality. Um, I think we had the scalability ch uh, change for the settings down to medium, but um, that's something we're also uh, working on as well. Um, which is bright for night, I notice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that has to do with some of the volumetric lighting um, and the fog kind mm -hmm. of like amplifying it. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. What do we got? Uh, I think I think there's some spiders we're gonna run to here soon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're gonna give us a little bit of trouble. Yeah. We didn't want to die. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, as you guys are seeing here, you know, with with the the MMO world and, and prepping for phase two, you know, this this is not um, <clears throat> this is stuff that keeps on chugging, keeps yeah. on going. Mm -hmm. right. you don't stop. Right. Not an intrepid. Absolutely. Um, you know, everything is kind of built like the node system, right? Like everything kind of helps everything else. Um, uh, we are getting good, valuable numbers and good, valuable feedback in terms of, um, you know, how to make this the best it can possibly be. Um, and uh, the Arena really has been informing everything else that we've been doing in terms of like what feels good, what kind of doesn't feel good, what we should cut, what we should keep. So. Mm -hmm. um, Again, it's it's about you know taking all that data, using that data, and making a better game with it. Yep. 
Somebody said, is that the wand of light? I think I did have a wand. Of light. You did. Yes. <laughs> I, swapped, I, think. I swapped over to a wand. I love the uh, ice effect when I uh, Yeah, you know, that was not something we'd ever see in, in the Battle Royale because of the uh, right. class kits. But, yes. you know, when we put it into, into a class, like it kind of turned into a really cool ability. And yes. we might take that and use it um, in the future. Or yeah. just let that happen, right? That right. kind of mm -hmm. emergent, like, interaction between different types of skills is something we really want to have. And so um, I think it's a cool example of, of how things work where we don't even expect them to. Yes. Yeah. Um, the rain stop. The rain did stop. The rain did stop. The rain is over. I, think I, I can almost smell it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there were some audio cues, actually, because of the rain. Uh, it was kind of windy when we were playing, I noticed. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we have audio on this clip for... <laughs> Oh, nice, Peter. Oh, man, I love Peter's cat using the cat balls. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good, Peter. <laughs> oh, that's good. So we're entering up uh, to a uh, stage three node here, right? Yep. We're entering into a village. So in our in our phase two uh, internal server, this area has been developed to a village stage. So right. there's mm -hmm. NPCs here, and that's who we're connecting with uh, because of that, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I think I might have been distracted by a, a shop. <laughs> I think, he, I think, I think you, were. you were telling me I was to like, go hey, to the, the like, quest guys over like, here. We need, to, we need to test the and quest. I was like, no, I want to go I buy like, stuff. Listen, I need, <laughs> I was like, need no. some gear. I know he looks exactly like the quest giver, but <laughs> come on over here. Oh, no. That's funny. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so we meet with this dude. <clears throat> uh, right now, you <coughs> we also see, I think uh, we keyed for uh, internal testing purposes, a space bar and tab are accepted. Yeah, just for a quick... <laughs> right, right. Quick, get that up and running. Very cool. Oh, updated quest. Nice. Yeah. I like this area. It's a little dark, but it's, it's, dark. Hey, it's it Halloween. Moody, and it was, yeah, that was one of the reasons why we picked right. this. Right. Why we yeah. picked this area. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Oh, well, I, know, got a I know why else there. we picked. It was because the quest had a cemetery yeah. at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Spoiler. good. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, I love uh, it. Steven can't stop teleporting. <laughs> I know. Am I just, I'm just, you know why? Because we didn't have a uh, cool down on that. Well, you know. I, well. So I was just teleporting everywhere. Which was a lot of fun, I gotta admit. No, I mean, that's, I love stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I think games should be fun. And I think that, you know, traversal is a big part of that. And, and having your character move across the world in interesting ways is a great way to do that um, and to keep people engaged. Um, there's yeah. a lot of travel in this game. And so, you know, we want to make sure that it's punchy and feels good and, mm -hmm. you know, has that kind of, you know, magical effect that yeah. it's, you know, not just, eh, I'm gonna run over here. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna run over here. <laughs> There is a lot of fog in this area. It's scary. It is? It is? Yeah. It's gotten a little bit darker. We, uh... Oh, nice. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> He's like, wait. Yeah, yeah, Peter. Yeah, yeah. Peter, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> you know, we need to change the animation on that fall so that it's like a more calculated land. Yeah, I wanted to do a superhero land. Yes. Our animators yeah. haven't really had time to touch that. Land. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... I was going to say, every time he's jumping, he's like, whoa, yeah. whoa. <laughs> I actually hear that voice in my head. <laughs> I like it. Um, so one of the uh, cool and exciting things about, um, you know, phase two, as we get through phase one and approaching that phase two mm -hmm. is, is just having that massive world, that open world. Yep, mm -hmm. and then trying to make that world just feel like it's lived in, that right. there's history there, and change. there's stories yeah. to be told. Yes. Yeah, and changing real time. Mm -hmm. That's part of what I love about the weather system is that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's weird. It, it adds a lot to, yeah. to, to kind of what you're feeling in the game yeah. that you don't almost notice. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about where we're, we're at with that. Don't judge my teleportation. No, that frozen track is, synergy isn't is that so great. <laughs> I love it. Gonna have to nerf that. No, no, why? <laughs> <laughs> These are uh, some slaveborn zombie birds. Here. Yeah. Also yeah, so, waiting for. So they moved in. Once this node hit level three, they moved in. Um, kind of took it over, and so your job is to push them back, um, and uh, you know, let let the people who have interred their loved ones here uh, get some rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
Someone had mentioned, uh, are cities going to look all the same? No, cities will look very different, even at the same stage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a lot of, <clears throat> the way we've built those uh, nodes to progress uh, takes into account a lot of different uh, aspects to, to present a different... Uh, right, mm -hmm. you know, you've got node type, you've got node race, you've got mm -hmm. the location, so all those things feed into how the layout is, is decided, feed into, you know, what kind of buildings are appropriate there, right. and... Mm -hmm. um, kind how much of buildings actually get built. Right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> again, about the effects, you know, these effects are right now um, uh, are toned for uh, the phase one. Yeah. Uh, but they will be adjusted for the MMO, so they won't be as bright and right. flashy. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we want to put some customization in where you can tone down those effects. Right, you change them more, you know. Yeah. 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 You have a channel that you can kind of adjust. Can you just pull that uh, flame I did. Yeah, you're just chasing me. Oh, did you? You're kind you of don't guys have teleport, you have a charge. I do. Charge, yeah. Nice. This is kind of like teleport. You just need a target. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> get a buff charge. That's right, nerf blink buff charge. <laughs> oh man, tank is new meta. Yeah, um, we're gonna have, by the way, a Q and A session at the end of this uh, stream, so uh, be prepared for that. Um, let's see. Oh, did we uh, we won this fight, right? We did. Okay. That's good. We were successful. <laughs> we were oh, there's the one. Oh, there's the one. Hey, look at that. Lit him up. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Very cool. All right. I think that's, that's I think think that is that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So that was an uh, early look at preparation for Alpha 1 Phase 2. Yep. Uh, Again, which is, when are we planning? Uh, I believe when? that is... Uh, March, April? I think March, in that April. in that general area. Yes. Uh, phase two, yes. Not alpha two, phase two. Yeah. So obviously we still have a lot of work to do, but um, but we're making progress as we are with you. Yeah, and we wanted to, oh, I wanted to, I forgot we're back on. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to uh, uh, to basically uh, give you guys, a, again, a look at that, show you the progress that's being made there, um, uh, which is considerable. The, the world itself in phase two is going to be a nice, sizable world. Uh, and it's where we're really going to hammer out the hybrid system that we've learned right. from phase one, mm -hmm. uh, right? So what we want to show you next, um, what was next on our docket? Are uh, we going to talk about... Uh, I think it was cosmetics, was it? Um, we wanted to talk about new cosmetics. Oh, can we show new cosmetics? Think we can. Do we have? Oh, here we go. Okay, mm -hmm. so <clears throat> we uh, one thing we did mention. Um, uh oh, did oh. I? Uh... You just shrink. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay, so one thing I wanted to we wanted to show um, was uh, okay. Again, we're not we're not mirroring uh, real life um, uh, holidays in game. No. But we will have uh, activities and events in game. Uh, that relate to the season, right? In a way, right. We want you to feel like you know. So this, this world has its own exactly holidays. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Some something immersive. So these aren't going to be pumpkin heads, uh, or <laughs> right. candy corn, uh, but we do have some darker themed. Delicious. Uh, yes, darker themed. Um, candy corn is delicious. Yeah. Wow. Uh, oh, it's okay. <laughs> Not ashamed of it. Uh, so let us discuss these uh, cosmetics. What we have here is oh, so these cosmetics will be available on Friday. We're going to uh, have them up on Friday, which is the 2nd, I believe, mm -hmm. November 2nd. Yep. Uh, they'll replace the existing cosmetics. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll just give you a quick sneak peek. This is, we won't tell you the names yet. Uh, we'll release those on Friday with the cosmetics, but we'll just give you a quick look uh, at them. So this is an amulet that your character can wear. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this can be above any armor set that you have. An accessory. An accessory. Uh, what do we have next? We have, this is a building. This is a, a particular building for your freehold, a skin. Uh, that you can apply to what we will reveal on Friday, yep. uh, what type of building that is. Uh, but it, as you can see, it's like this creepy crypt mausoleum. Um, this is the um, the armor, the costume. The costume. Mm -hmm. yeah. The costumes um, for the character. Uh, kind of darker, a bit. 
Yeah. Just a, a little, little, a little creepy. A little if you saw them in a parade, you might, you know, look at them twice. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, next one. What do we have here? This looks like an undead it's mount. Like a zombie elk. A zombie, zombie elk. Okay. Yeah. I like it. That's pretty cool. What we got next? Oh, this is the a um, monster that the, we have to fight. No. <laughs> what no? is it then? No, Lassie. <laughs> it is a, a pet. This is a zombie pet. This is a pet? Yes, it crawls next to you How as gruesome. you walk and it can attack things. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, okay, got it. Uh, very cool, I like it. Uh, next one, we have this creepy angler-like uh, ship. So awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, repurposed angler skeleton yes, thing. Yes, I like it. Yeah. Uh, next one. I think that's it. Oh, we don't have one more? I don't so. Oh, okay, that's six. Yeah. Okay, very good. Cool. So those are a sneak peek at Friday's uh, new cosmetics. Um, I know all the necroman necromancers out there are pleased. <laughs> um, okay, <clears throat> next thing we want to move on to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, in, uh, in our uh, Alpha 1 Phase 1, Yep. Uh, having um, moved to address action combat in preparation for the hybrid combat. Uh, that phase was <clears throat> brought about by a uh, response to the community, basically, and, and their concerns for not seeing our work on combat early on. Right. Now, obviously... Uh, and also, honestly, just like, you know, having a chip on our shoulders, it was a Kickstarter project. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, you know baggage associated with that and we wanted to show that we are doing the work absolutely um, and yeah. we wanted to get something that's actually playable into people's hands as fast as we could right um, so that was a big part of that too yes uh, additionally <clears throat> um, one of the important aspects of, of alpha one was uh, getting the technical feedback we needed from having testers involved mm -hmm. uh, that was a huge component of us uh, preparing a uh, these testing phases for having the numbers that we saw in backers, yeah, uh, which absolutely. we you know we have over uh, almost over forty no we have over forty thousand people who are in betas and alphas yeah. right mm -hmm. now, uh, and that's, that's a crazy. lot. That's a lot of people. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so uh, we need to make sure that you know <clears throat> bugs we see now uh, we address them early as possible so that we don't see those during the. Uh, the testing phases moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, and honestly, especially huge, when it gets big, right? Right. When we get to Alpha One Phase <clears throat> Two, like we can't have, you know, right? We've actually limited. We stopped sales of Alpha One uh, because we didn't want to be above a certain number before we had gotten the bugs that we knew would exist in Alpha One right. out mm -hmm. of Alpha One. Mm -hmm. yep. So a huge shout out, by the way, to Alpha One testers um, because these guys are honestly going through. You know some serious uh, bug reporting yeah. and, and yeah. real, no, we've real some testing. Really yeah. good stuff. Yeah, um, and people are taking it really seriously. Yes, uh, which is cool. And you know, it shows that you guys really care about the project. Yes. You know, it's not it's not just about you know right. playing something <laughs> fun. It's about it's not a port over from another you know right. from the east that we are playing a launched game. Mm -hmm. We're actually having a hand. You know, I say we, but the players are actually having a hand in creating this product yeah. by helping us test. Which is really cool. Which is very cool. Um, so honestly, everyone at Intrepid Studios uh, loves our testers. Uh, and it is um, something that you know, we could not do without you guys, uh, honestly. Um, we, have, we have been able to fix a lot of things over this past month. Uh, and it has been very, very beneficial. <clears throat> One of the things, though, um, that you know, we have noticed is uh, a little bit of a pushback and confusion with the battle royale mode, right? right. From mm -hmm. People who aren't following the game necessarily. Uh, and as we explained in the past, the battle royale mode was such, a, was such an easy implementation. Right. Uh, it was something that really only required work on the storm. Uh, otherwise, everything, as you even see in the MMO footage we just showed, uh, is a crossover right. uh, mm -hmm. in comparison to when we move into phase two. Yeah, it's right. literally just a game mode. Absolutely. Um, so <clears throat> we've decided to do a couple of things. Um, with that. The first thing we're going to do uh, is uh, phase one, we are no longer going to uh, refer to or name as phase alpha one, phase one. Uh, we're going to give this uh, testing period a name uh, right. that is an actual uh, title, uh, and we're going to move the, um, <clears throat> the battle royale, the 
castle sieges and the horde mode into a side arena right. uh, that will be playable by everyone. Now, Alpha 1 testers will still continue to have their hands on phase one uh, early. They'll test these modes out a month before anyone else has access to uh, because, again, you guys are the troopers who are, are, are putting the time in to help us test these things. Uh, but we want to see as many people as possible coming into our servers right. mm -hmm. because we're standing up these regions in North America and Europe. Across the world, uh, we're moving actually uh, um, OCE as well. We'll be putting in servers. Uh, we're, we're Across the world, we want to have as many people hitting these servers as possible. Right. Uh, and that allows us to test um, uh, performance. It allows us to scale up our uh, account registration process, all those things. Uh, so, we are announcing that uh, Alpha 1 Phase 1, the Battle Royale, the Castle Siege mode, as well as the Horde mode, will be a side arena mode referred to as Ashes of Creation Apocalypse. Yes. Uh, and the reason for the term Apocalypse, it's actually a very uh, interesting uh, story there. <laughs> uh, when we create <clears throat> these testing branches, we branch off in our, well, what's, what's called Perforce, uh, and that's where we have uh, our projects based right. in, right? And every time we do a branch, we assign a name. Uh -huh. And uh, it's sort of like a code name. Uh, and um, this branch early on was referred to as APOC. And it was referred to as APOC because uh, of Apocalypse. And Apocalypse really was the, the setting we wanted the lore for this experience to participate in. Right. right? Um, that, that We didn't know at the time, I think, that it was going to be necessarily a Battle Royale uh, game mode, but we knew it was going to be a, a fighting game mode. Right. We, we wanted to do something that wasn't like touching the actual the like, MMO, core lore right. of the MMO. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. so what we decided to do was put this setting in Vera before the fall. So this is when the calamity has occurred and uh, players are attempting to escape and some unlucky... Uh, uh, Few. A few, and by few we mean a good majority, but <laughs> <laughs> some Oops. unlucky majority of people uh, got stuck uh, and are fighting for survival, and that is uh, the uh, uh, Battle Royale game mode. Additionally, there are la some last bastions of defense in these castles where they believe they can hold out against the forces that are right. going to the destroy them. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're fighting over control of those castles. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually the horde mode is where those forces of corruption that's catch the last up. That's stand. the last stand. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so that's the, that's the idea behind uh, what Apocalypse is. Uh, and um, one of the most important things behind uh, the decision to make this uh, a reality with Apocalypse um, is one to mitigate the confusion. <clears throat> you know, we d I didn't like seeing that people were looking at our testing phase and they would say, you know, oh, Ashes has gone down a battle route, or, or they'll right. see the castle siege and say, oh, it's just an instant sieging, or right. oh, it's just an instant horde mode. Uh, we want to make sure that there is a distinction there uh, between what is and will be a side uh, uh, game mode, that right. is those three, and then what is the flagship MMORPG that we are benefiting from that testing. Right. Right. And one of the ways we want to give back to the community uh, in participating in this testing uh, is allowing for uh, progress, quests, achievements, uh, rewards to be gained in Apocalypse. And Apocalypse right. will be a, a, a free-to-play um, uh, mode. So you, you won't even have to be a backer necessarily playing it. But <clears throat> you will have rewards and quests and achievements that you and your participation and your um, um, performance in the, that uh, game, whether it be the Castle Siege, the Horde Mode, or the Battle Royale, uh, will earn you cosmetics. Right. Uh, there'll be costumes, there'll be mounts to earn, there will be um, uh, housing and furniture, uh, there will be emotes, <clears throat> there will be um, uh, weapon variants. Right. Uh, a lot of these... Uh, uh, what we already have in production for uh, our project, Ashes of Creation, we apply some variants and skins for uh, and make them only available through participating and helping us test these different game modes. Um, and they will carry over on your account to the MMORPG. So you get to have a hands-on uh, with uh, all of these different modes after our Alpha 1 testers have gone through, tested, vetted, had access, and given their uh, feedback. Uh, but after they've done those things, everyone will be able to then join, participate, and earn these rewards yeah. uh, for their participation. Um, so <clears throat> that's kind of our, our give back to you guys. In you can think of it as like a super, 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 super early access, right? right. Like it's, it's <laughs> like a, a game before the game. 
Right, absolutely. It lets you get I I immersed in both the art and right. the character creation. And, lore and, the and eventually we'll have and... um, some changes that we'll make. You know, as we develop our character creation screen, we'll implement that into mm -hmm. the arena mode. Right. So you can create characters there, save those characters. When you make a character in Ashes, you can port over that save. Yep. Um, <clears throat> uh, you'll take the rewards, as we said. Additionally, we'll have a housing uh, area where um, right now in, uh, in Apocalypse, you have a scene where you have a squad in or your solo or whatever. Right. That scene will eventually become your house. Your freehold. Your freehold, mm -hmm. exactly. And you will earn uh, uh, furniture to place in that freehold and you can build out your house and yep. whatnot uh, through special And then when you events. invite your friends to your party, they will come to, your, come house. to your house. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. I mm -hmm. totally love that. Um, yes. So those are some exciting new developments. Now, what that means for, <clears throat> um, what that means for uh, the month of November uh, is that we are um, moving towards a 24-7 uh, test environment uh, for Alpha 1, mm -hmm. uh, Phase 1, for Apocalypse. Uh, and uh, that 24-7 test environment we are working towards, uh, it could be as early as two weeks from now, it could be as late as three to four weeks. Right. Uh, we are working towards it. Uh, there are some persistence issues, that, or not issues, but persistence fine-tunings and polish that we want to have in place. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and we are absolutely working on it. So, what else do we have here? Uh, Q and A. Two hundred Q and A. Yeah, I we think can that's, do Q and A. That's, that's, that's the, the schedule. Next, next schedule. Okay. We follow the schedule. So, do we have a Q and A channel set up for Discord? I hope so. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, Q and A over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, if we could, uh, if one of the mods could get a Q and A channel set up for Discord, um, and then uh, we have a uh, forums. That we can take. Uh, I like how you from. gestured to me. I know. I was like, anybody have forums? <laughs> okay, no, okay, I guess we'll bring up forums here. I don't have pockets here. in the suit. Okay. Is anyone asking direct from Twitch? Uh, maybe. Could be. But that's probably moving at a, uh, a fast, fast rate. Um, here we go. I'm bringing up our forums. Uh, that's a recipe for meatloaf. Nice. <laughs> AshleyCreation.com. Here we go. Okay. Um, so while that Discord is getting set up, and I am going to the forums. Here we go. I am on the forums. Um, we'll go to announcements, headlines, and announcements, headlines. Okay. Here we go. So first question we have <clears throat> is... Um, from Santi182, any chance that we can see the missing art from the Kickstarter campaign, the Phoenix Aura, and the Pioneer's Cloak? Didn't we do the Pioneer's Cloak? I thought we had the Pioneer's Cloak. I thought we had the Pioneer's Cloak, too. Yeah, I think we might have the Pioneer's Cloak. The Phoenix Aura, though, we can... Um, we will be working on those missing uh, uh, concept pieces, yes. Um, will there be some new official wallpapers? For example, the Burning Tree is awesome, and if so, uh, will there be animated wallpapers, perhaps, for Wallpaper Engine or just plain video? Oh, games? man, I'd love some animated wallpapers. I think in the launch of our new um, site, uh, we may have uh, an animated paper we could potentially do, which yeah. is the Burning Tree kind of... We could do that. We could do that. Yeah. It's one good. of those things that takes resources um, and takes resources kind of away from the game. Mm -hmm. We're doing as much as we can on that side because uh, we know it's important to mm -hmm. people. Um, uh, but yeah, I, it's it's that will continue to develop as we continue to hire more people. Um, right. So, mm -hmm. next question <clears throat> from unknown system error: Are mounts, mules, and combat pets under the flagging system, or will they be loot pinatas? Will targeting someone with a combat pet be a force flag or a free way to attack someone without flagging? No. Uh, anything that you control, whether it be a combat pet, it's like uh, you. It's like right. you. So yeah. it'll participate in the flagging system. If it attacks someone, you will flag, and right. so will it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just a proxy for you, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, let's see. Here we go. Fresh Cuts asks, I was wondering if you could please elaborate on large-scale PvE content. Is there going to be PvE raids and raid bosses? Will it be open world? We have answered this in the past. There's definitely information out there. There's a couple of good wikis uh, for Ashes of Creation that has this specific answer. Uh, the answer to both of those questions is yes, and there's more information uh, if you want to look for it out there. Uh, D Phantom asks, where is the sandal? I must know. I've searched all the beaches and ports. Please, Sandal Lord, grant me your wisdom. <laughs> no, we can't tell you. <laughs> It's out there, there though. There I is promise. a sandal I out promise. there. Believe. We will also have prizes and achievements for finding the sandal. Yeah. Uh, so that will be there. Um, okay, Metalhead. How will you make melee combat different compared to the current flailing of the weapons? 
how melee animations change. Uh, so animations are obviously a work in progress, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we've definitely gotten some good feedback about that. For example, the um, uh, the follow through on some of the root animations yep. and attacks mm -hmm. uh, feel a little floaty, a little sticky too, a little sticky. Yeah. So we're adjusting that as it is. Uh, over the past month, we've also seen feedback uh, on um, the hit scan related to melee weapons, and we've adjusted that into a cone, and yep. we're going to change a little bit of stuff. That's the whole purpose of Apocalypse. Yeah. Is yeah. So so yes, the yes. answer is yes. We are mm -hmm. going to continue to iterate on that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, again. Like we've been in development for a very short time, yeah. um, and so you know we're still doing the asset creation side of things. Mm -hmm. And MMO is is a huge yes. beast in terms of that, um, and so it takes a while to kind of get up to speed and get everything in place how it should be. So mm -hmm. again, a lot of stuff is proxies for other <coughs> things, or you know, refinements always going to be coming. Mm -hmm. um, Niggly Nathan asks, can we name ships? If so, will the name of the ship appear on the side? Same questions for Freehold Taverns and Shop. So anything that, uh, excuse me, the ship is targetable, uh, which means that you'll be able to select a ship, similar to how uh, Arcage was in, in selecting a ship. Uh, and when you do that, you'll see the custom name of the ship above the target. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, you could name your ship. One of the funny things is, I think uh, with my guild, that was mandatory in Arcage um, that we named our ships after Federation ships in Star Trek. <laughs> so we had the, you know, the USS Intrepid, we had the yeah. USS Enterprise. Uh, and <laughs> it was really easy for me during raids so that I could be like, the captain of the Voyager. Because <laughs> <laughs> you remember them. Oh, I did remember them, exactly. I loved it. Um, but yes, you'll be able to name ships. <clears throat> you'll be able to name uh, mounts, uh, mules, uh, you'll be able to name um, buildings will be targetable. So, it, you know, it could be Stevens uh, Manor. Uh, something along mm -hmm. those lines. So, um, Okay, question from Wester. I, I see the tank and cleric equals paladin, but summoner and cleric equals a necromancer. Will players who opt into cleric secondary have choices between light and dark augments, or does your primary class determine your overall theme? Um, so the secondary class of a cleric does have choices between light and dark augments, and that's what influences your primary class's abilities uh, as well. Um, the flavor of that. Uh, will there be a logo editor before launch? Like a character editor, since guild logos will be made in game. Uh, before uh, launch? Better be. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, imagine we'll have to have that ready for probably, I would say, Alpha 2, since we, that's when we have some of the yeah. guild systems coming online. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, let's. Uh, Kev Larkent. Hello, AOC staff. Love what you are doing so far. However, one thing that was mentioned earlier in the scene got me a bit concerned. As I understood it, you were thinking about planning on making combat pets available for artisan class. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think it's a good idea. Let me tell you why. Um, that's a very big question. That's a very big question. Um, combat pets available for artisan class. So the artisan class uh, is really doesn't relate to your adventuring class. And uh, combat pets uh, are more of an agnostic to uh, class uh, acquisition, kind of an item that you, uh, a pet that you raise up and has combat abilities. So... Uh, some classes do have skills that summon pets, though. For right. example, the which summoner, are a different class, which of are pets. a different class than artisan. Let's right, say, right. Um, so maybe there's a little bit of misunderstanding there. <clears throat> um, it's a long question. Probably deserves a much better answer. Yes, um, it's a long question. Maybe we'll jump on there. Jeff sounded like he volunteered. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. We have a question from Autumn. Uh, no, we have a question from Beyond Eighty Nine. Is parkour and movement still a thing in Ashes, as in the trailer that we're seeing in Ninja Ranger doing some parkour in Game and Climbing Castle? I know we've answered this before. Yeah, so parkour is, is a difficult thing to do for an MMO. Uh, it's not difficult. It's just a lot of work. It's a very time-consuming process. Um, mm -hmm. So I love parkour in games. I love movement in games. Um, I love uh, the feeling that my character is an acrobat. Um, so we will approach that in a... Uh, as much as we can do, kind of kind of approach. It's it'll probably be one of the later systems that we do. It'll probably be based around um, you know kind of low hanging fruit in terms of making movement feel cool. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I would love to have a full parkour system in place, but um, the scope of the game is already really large, and uh, there's probably a limited amount <coughs> to do uh, by the time we get to launch. Mm -hmm. um, Democles asks bards question mark anything yes, would be true. enough. They're amazing. True. Sure. <laughs> there are bards. There are bards. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, we did have a question the other day with regards to uh, when we're going to be uh, stepping up some of the um, blog posts and whatnot. Uh, with the launch of our new website, as well as our new account services, uh, we will be also implementing some new blogs. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes, 
and I know I've said this in the past, I know there are many people asking this, Nodes 3 will be soon. Oh, we already did Nodes 3, aren't we on Nodes 4? Oh, did we do Nodes 3? Yeah. I think you're right. We're okay. on Nodes 4, right? Yeah. Let's just do 5. <laughs> we'll just go with 5. Okay, 5 then. <laughs> I thought there were only 4 parts. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Nodes 3 is done, and it's already out there. Good luck. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, uh, soon. Soon trademark. Um, okay, let's go over to some uh, Discord questions because I know yeah. we're pr a little pressed for time. Yeah, yeah we're also going to have one other point. Yeah. We have two other points, don't we? Oh, did we? I don't know. I know we only wrote one down. But I thought oh, okay, sure. Okay, sounds good. Um, where is this channel in Discord? The channel in Discord, where are you? Uh, live stream questions. Found it. Got them. All right. <laughs> nice. Uh, question from... Let me scroll up to the top. All right. <clears throat> Question from, okay, we don't need to say that name. Um, <laughs> and because of that name, you've lost your question. <laughs> um, <laughs> If we can't say it on stream, can't say it on stream. We don't get the question. E. Tom asks, "Are you concerned that the free-to-play apocalypse game will take away players from the world uh, PvP of the real MMO?" No, Tom. I do not believe so. So, I mean, apocalypse is an action-based combat uh, arena that it's has all combat all the time. All mm -hmm. combat all the time. <clears throat> MMO players, uh, you know, not all MMO players are arena players, yeah. and not all arena players are MMO players. Yes. So, there will be a portion of the community that comes to the Ashes of Creation universe comes to the Ashes of Creation IP uh, because they might not have been MMO players elsewise, but yet they can still help our MMORPG, which is the flagship, by testing and playing Apocalypse. Um, you know, the data that they give us, the support that they give us through Apocalypse, all of those things go to fuel the MMORPG. Uh, my live, eat, breathe, watch, drink is MMORPG. Uh, and most people here at the studio is that same way. Yeah. Uh, so, so Apocalypse uh, will always funnel and fuel uh, what we can accomplish and do in the MMORPG. Um, okay, question from Keaton. Uh, could you run through just briefly on what some of the different buildings will be for the specific nodes? Religious, militaristic. Uh, so I know we have, um, you know, as nodes advance in stages, boy, it's been a while since we talked about nodes. Yeah, it's been a while. I know. Uh, as nodes advance in stages, <clears throat> um, uh, they unlock different specific uh, uh, node type buildings. So, for example, at the stage three is when you really start to see uh, the node type um, uh, expand with a building type. So, militaristic will have a barracks. The barracks will be able to train and have quest lines that relate to. Uh, combat, defeating monsters nearby, uh, guild warfare potentially, participation in castle sieges, you know, a lot of things that you can do through the barracks that is uh, housed within a militaristic node. Same is true for a temple or a university at a scientific node or uh, a, a, a marketplace uh, that's present at the um, um, economic note. But those particulars will be a part of the new blogs that we're going to be releasing yep. uh, that kind of go into depth. I know we've told you that in the past, but they will be going into depth on some of those ideas. And again, the other important aspect is even though we have these Q&A sessions, even though we talk a lot about uh, Ashes of Creation, we don't want to reveal everything. Uh, you know, part of what was so unique to our experience as MMO players uh, uh, was trying to go for discovery. that nostalgia yeah. of discovery. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Not everything we should know before we start the game. We should have to discover those things. And that, that lends to, I think, recreating that nostalgic kind of um, uh, experience we've had. Okay, um, question <laughs> from uh, Spooky Needle. How in-depth will sailing be? Will you need a crew to manage certain sails? There Is will spooky be... Sailing? Spooky Needle. Oh. How in-depth will sailing be? Sailing will be pretty in-depth uh, and it's going to be based on the size of the ship that you're using. Right. So there will be components for uh, seamanship uh, that uh, uh, other players you'll need to have on board if you want to operate a vessel to the best of its abilities, let's right. say in combat or, or traversing just the world. Um, when the main game launches, how will they be accessed? I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Will you teleport there instantly? Where's there and they? Okay, I don't know what that means, Oni style. Only, only style. Um, okay, question from uh, Inquisitor. Hey guys, much love. Question. Will there be viability in only using a single one-handed weapon without sacrificing the optimization of dual wielding two-handers or a shield? Interesting question. 
I think the answer to that is going to be based on, okay, so <clears throat> the benefit of, of dual wielding is that um, it may have certain skills and or passives that are available as a point allocation when you're determining class specification, mm -hmm. right? Uh, one of the benefits might be, should you choose to allocate those points in a different way, you would give up the use or efficiency of that second weapon or uh, um, uh, shield or sigil or whatever you might have there. Uh, so one of the benefits could be that you can allocate more points to something else. Uh, will that be um, the prime... Uh, uh, I mean, it depends on what you want to what you want to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really specifically talked about, like, one-handing a weapon. Uh, we've always kind of gone with the assumption that even if it's not a shield, you'd have something in your offhand. Right. Um, so we haven't really approached it in that way. I, I don't know exactly uh, where we would go on that. Right. Um, I think, yeah. Well, well, that's something we have to... We've used that second slot to sort of balance out two-handers. Um, so, um, again, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I'm not quite sure... Yeah, like even if it isn't a shield, you know, there's magical sigils that we're going right. to have. There's mm -hmm. uh, artifacts that you can hold in the right. second hand. So it doesn't always have to be sort of. It's not always hard. a weapon, but there's always something. Right. Um, so. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, we have Halloween stuff. Oh, yes. Yes, that was the we thing have I was thinking. Oh, that was the thing you were yep. thinking about. Um, okay, let me just grab one more question before we move to that, and then we have to show the Halloween video, too. So we have to show the Halloween video. Uh, so, one more question. Let me try to find one good question. Um, here we go. I'm trying to find a good one. Um, okay. Question, question, question. Oh, this dude still asked the same question, but he didn't change the name. Um, but you know, we'll answer it, and answer it anyways. Uh, <coughs> so this is the last question. Is the before 2020 release still likely? The answer is yes, it is still likely. And, um, to expand on that, though, uh, I do want to say, uh, you know, I have noticed, obviously, the conversation is, uh, how do they intend to release by 2020 if they have, you know, alpha scheduled for second uh, or third quarter or whatever? Uh, the betas that we intend to have are not months-long yeah. betas. We, we want to keep it short. Pretty short. The Those game should be pretty much done, done at that point. Done at beta stage. And final exactly. polishes and stuff like that being put in. Yes. Um, it is... It is, again, we don't want people to get totally burnt out on the game before we actually release. Right, um, exactly. So uh, once we get to those beta phases, they should be short and sweet, um, and that's the plan. Right, and then the other important fact is, you know, people say, um, take your time. Uh, we will not release Ashes of Creation unless it hits our quality standards right. uh, of where we feel it needs to be. So, do I say that we'll hit before 2020? Yes, I believe we will. Uh, if it's going to take a bit more time, not from a feature creep standpoint, but from a quality assurance and bugs and or uh, um, uh, completing stability, stability yeah. we understand that. And predicting the launch date of an MMO has always been difficult. I can't point to one in the history uh, uh, of playing MMOs that has hit necessarily the date they started yep. at <laughs> in development. It's a, big, it's a big task. It's the biggest game you can make. Um, so uh, I fully under, I, I commit to you guys uh, that our project, Ashes of Creation, will be in an acceptable and performant-ready uh, 